as we've now passed 2400 stag kills into the Red Deer Great One grind, we have one and a half times the total amount of kills from the White Tail Great One grind already, and I would like to think a end is sometime in the fairly near future, but it's so hard to say it is ultimately so random. It could be the next kill, it could be more than double what we've done already, but the one thing that we can't do is give up if we ever intend to get this done. So we're back out here on Quattro once again, and I don't think there's much more to say beyond that. Red Deer Stags, pretty much gonna be the only thing that we're going after today. And I guess I'd rather see a minimum weight estimate level four than kind of like the smaller fives. There's just something about the smaller stags and the smaller antler species in general in Call of the Wild that at least, I don't know, somehow makes it a little bit entertaining. And there was another stag track and it would have been kind of in that level five or level six weight class. I'm just not exactly sure where it is. And as per usual, it is nice to see stags down here at the Tornado Lake. They're not super consistent. So anywhere we can kind of get those bonus stags in to up the total number per run, in my opinion, the better, the more time it potentially shaves off of this grind. I think that's going to be our guy. Oddly enough, that is also a level four, just a slightly bigger one. And another long shot from the M1, so we might as well go over this way and go ahead and pick him up. Not too often do we have multiple level fours in one area, and I don't know that I've ever seen that rack on a four. That actually happened with a level seven in our last hunt too, so maybe that's a thing. I'm not sure if it has anything to do with the Mississippi update, but seems to be a bit of a trend here. I mean, usually I would expect to see this being a level five. I guess fours can have that set of antlers as well. Good to know, I suppose. I don't know that it's that useful of information, but always good to get a couple down, especially at the very first lake. That's interesting, it was like 10 kg heavier for that other level 4. I really would have expected that to be a 5. But anyway, we are going to be off to the smaller lakes then. And I started off here and just didn't see anything. So the one thing that was relevant was there was a max weight estimate track heading up that way. So I'm hoping to see a big one at this first spot. Well, one thing's for sure, that is not a max weight estimate red deer. At least it went into a drink zone and stopped for us, although we might have to kind of sidestep to get around that tree. So there's a couple of potential ways this could go. Either we still haven't gotten far enough away for the max weight estimate one to render in, although there's not a whole lot further that we can actually go here. If it's not that, it could simply be that we are too early and we'll have to make a return trip down to this lake. So we'll kind of see Maybe this spot could have it as well. It's hard to say where it would have went, just with a couple of tracks, but hopefully if we can get a max for decimal one around here, we can at least feel somewhat confident that it would have been the one we had tracked. I see no sign of any other red deer, so let's go ahead and grab this level six. We'll check the other lake over here just in case, and then we can go back to that other spot if there is no big ones. Not the best looking red deer I've ever seen, but anyway, not a level 10 either, so not what we are ultimately after. Well, that didn't take too long. One quick return trip might have gotten us to three different red stags. One had made and called down there a three. This is rather unfortunate, but I'd be willing to bet that is the one that we had a track from, so I don't know how we're going to get all three of them. That one's far enough away, it doesn't matter right now. But the wind isn't that great. He happens to be drinking in about the worst spot I can imagine to try to get a shot in there. Like, there may be room. Yeah, I think there is room. Kind of like behind the grass. We're just going to have to manage to keep him spotted and maybe go for like a higher lung shot. That didn't impact. That one did. It didn't drop him, which is probably good. I would say at least that means it wasn't spinal cord. So worst case is vertebrae and we'll bring him down and we'll get the respawn. Best case is kind of top of the lungs. The three I would think is most likely long gone. 
Hard to say though, if he was going down towards the water, he may still be in view. So since there's no sign of him, we'll go ahead and get the six. If that's a warning call, the three definitely took off. And at least that one is gonna be a good solid hit. There's no hunting pressure yet. So the level seven, unfortunately, is not going to be a gold for us. And surprisingly, the three is already back there and nervous. So we gotta be able to get it. There is blood here, so there had to be a vertebrae hit on the 7. And if we can relocate the level 3 there, we can hopefully drop that and then go and start to track and claim. So, yeah, go figure. The one and only hard shot we made was the one that we didn't really try to, but kind of the way it goes. And I did just see the hunting pressure pop up, so the seven's going to be down as well. And in an ideal world, actually I can see him. I think we lucked out here. He would have been starting to come back to his zone because the vertebrae shot would take so long to bring him down, he'd be nervous and starting to walk back. And considering the way he's facing, I would say that is probably exactly what happened. And kind of unfortunate that we messed that one up. It had to be a good bit lower to have any shot at the lungs there, so that probably wasn't even possible. But this is one of my favorite racks, so it would have been nice to actually get the gold there, but I guess, again, the silver lining is the fact that it is simply a common fur type. Not a rare, which, if we could get a rare with this rack, it would probably be my favorite. But go figure, we had three stags here at the place that we started, and we were just simply here too early. There were none actually in sight at the time. Bronze, though, for that guy. At least we had that double lung heart shot in there. And now we can kind of get back to the main run and get up to these other smaller lakes. Well, this is not common. There are three stags at a lake that pretty much only ever spawns two. And unfortunately, that biggest one, the level seven in there, is not in a good spot. Real quick, I want to confirm that they're far enough away not to hear a 22 shot just kind of without it hitting near them. That will go ahead and alert them. And we'll see if we can maybe still manage to get all three. But it may explain the kind of lack of stags at the other lakes that we were at. There really was not a whole lot going on. And considering there were three here, which is pretty rare. And also the amount of stags we saw down in the far southeast. I'm kind of thinking those stags normally would have been at the last couple of small lakes. And by the way, we have sort of reached the point in the video where maybe the less important stags don't tend to make the cut. So this little bit of hunting pressure right here was just simply a level six stag. So I don't often kind of explain it, but if you notice the ammo count kind of like dropping drastically between red deer, that's usually what happened. Just a bunch of small ones that instead of making a 25 minute video on a bunch of silver red deer, kind of get cut out to save time essentially. So we're guaranteed one gold with the level seven. Unfortunately, we missed out by point two on our six there. That rack has a slight chance of uh, making it, but that guy was a guarantee and a 195. Eclipses that mark by about 13 and the one kind of unfortunate thing, I thought it was maybe an intestine shot and we'll get to take a look at the blood in a moment, but this one, I think our shot really didn't have much other room. I want to say there was a hide in the way for that one, but kind of have to track him and waste a bit of time. At the very least though, we did manage to bring all three down and it was an intestine shot. So regardless, it would have brought him down. We didn't need the follow up, but might have saved us a bit of time in our track there. Speaking of a bit of a time waste, we're going to have to go for a kind of longer shot on this one. And the main reason is sometimes there are red deer drinking essentially where we're standing. A lot of times, right when they get into the zone, they'll turn, but that guy did not. So at least he stayed broadside for us. And I think we need to get into the vitals. It's set about 340 meters there, so maybe a single lung shot at that distance, that would make sense. But we do need to kind of go over there to look back to this particular zone. And we'll see if there's actually any over here. And I always like to take that shot before we go over there, especially because some of the trees start to get in the way. So longer shot, gonna have to track a little bit, but another one that is eventually gonna go down. As it turns out, it probably wasn't necessary to take that long of a shot. It was a vital hit, so 
we did get the gold on that one, but I didn't see anything back on the other side, so we can continue our way around. Sometimes you can even see the hunting pressure there from the last run. They will drink down in there maybe like half of the runs. And since we're most of the way there, we might as well give it a look before we continue onwards. Well, that's a good sign. First decent red deer of the hunt is the kind of branchy rag mythical. And there's another less impressive stag in there. If we could land a shot, that would be nice. Might have to just kind of go for a next shot unless... Okay, finally got a shot in there between all the hinds. It's been so interesting. The last bunch of runs in a row, this particular area has had just two stags. And to go back to the one like earlier that pretty much consistently spawns too, this spot generally is quite inconsistent and sometimes gets up to like three or four stags. So I guess at least when it comes to the ease of shooting and getting all of our respawns, just having two isn't a bad deal. I really do like this rack. It's almost kind of like the old mythical and I guess it could be called the small diamond rack. It was almost always a troll rack back with the legacies, but just it's a little bit bigger. I think it does look quite good. Uh, unlike this one with these sort of droopy tines that they're at the top of the main beam, but at least we got them both for response. Thank goodness for the Call the Wild wishlist video, which assuming I didn't end up scrapping, some of you guys maybe saw that the background footage for a lot of that was a Red Deer run, and we wrapped up that run really with nothing happening, but in the process of recording the background footage for that wishlist video, this guy showed up and is a lot more interesting than what would have been an ending with a couple of level 6s and a 7. Now, this is the rack that has the opportunity to troll, but with a heart shot right there, and maybe that can add into the December montage, which by the way, all of the drop shots for the November montage with the Red Deer I thought was pretty cool. But, uh, that is a little bit better, I think, than wrapping up with some silvers and golds. Now, hopefully, that is not a gold and will be big enough to make diamond, but that will remain to be seen for just a moment here. If I remember correctly, this would be diamond number 10 if he makes it, and he did at 255, and for the first time on a diamond red deer, we get to see a first type described as anything other than common, but you see these split brows, that does basically indicate it's the smaller version of this rack which can troll. Luckily in this case he is a good bit over diamond, more than 4 points over that requirement, and we can go ahead and tax him and send him to the trophy lodge. The one unfortunate thing, because he is a smaller rack, I kind of wish he was the one rack shape smaller that you see sometimes on kind of like the level 7s and 8s. I've been screenshotting the 7s and 8s trying to find the difference and I need to get a 9 to screenshot the true score of, but maybe that'll happen as we continue with our grind. It turns out though, and you may be able to see it already, that was not the only good respawn from that last run. It is maybe the smallest rare that we've seen on this grind, but an albino level 4 next to a pretty decent 7 and some other smaller ones. Now, the irony is, this is the lake that we would have wrapped up this run on with a bunch of nothing, if not for recording the Call of the Wild wishlist backdrop footage, so I guess it kind of worked out in the end. The respawns from that ended up being some kind of better things, and I actually managed to, I think, make a little double heart shot there. Uh, well, unfortunate to see the bodies disappear, because that would have looked a lot cooler, uh, once again for montage reasons and such, but maybe they stuck around long enough for all that, but yeah, go figure. An entire run with basically nothing to speak of, and then we come back, do another run just essentially where it doesn't matter what's in the background, and there's a diamond and a rare just waiting on the map, but I guess the biggest reason I even wanted to do Red Deer as the background footage for that was simply because I knew there was the opportunity to continue shooting stuff and getting respawns, but as it turns out, it was checking the respawns that got us the results that we were looking for, and obviously no great one respawned, although maybe that's what I need to do is start just recording the runs and not actually 
uh, commentating over them, because that is what I was doing. That seemed to work pretty good. But it's nice to see another rare. We went about 2,000 kills with no rares. And I would say in the last, I don't know, 250, there's been a Mela and an Albino now. This guy is just about going to match our Piebald. It's a very similar score. I think it's 90-something from... It was basically an initial spawn on Tay. So that one kind of counts as part of the ground, I think, kind of not. But another nice little heart shot there. Cool to go and add that. And once again, now we're going to have a lonely uh, rare male stag. Since the Melanistic female we just shot is already with that Melanistic male. And I think yeah, that's one more stag. So might as well hit that and get the additional respawn. Although, eh, that might not have been a great idea. I think we deleted the zone already, and that just means they're going to move over here for... Well, maybe they've already done it. But yeah, we're going to have to shoot a bunch of stags and delete the zones. We're uh, probably going to leave these smaller guys and end on a better note, I think, with that diamond and albino. We can get those on the next run through. We're definitely starting to see this lodge fill up more and more, and I do want to, with the rares at least, put them on the full body platforms. At least while they're available like in the main part of the lodge. So for now we get to just have a lone albino stag back there. And by the way, the piebald from Te Aoro is 112. So that officially is our smallest rare of the grind thus far. That 114 albino from one of the first videos on the grind would have been our smallest albino so far. And then the new addition with the diamond just kind of going opposite. One that we had from a while back at 266. 255 for that guy. And it's not necessarily like a permanent thing. This is just almost like a temporary Red Deer Lodge. Maybe we'll keep it together depending on how the Red Deer grind ends. But kind of variety with the dark brown versus the brown fur type. But a much nicer ending, like I said, than wrapping up with a bunch of silvers and golds. A diamond and a little albino is always a good thing. And I would like to think that's a sign of progress when the diamonds and rares show up. But anyway, that is going to do it for this video. So thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.